has been a lot of critique within the academy, the uh, academia against uh, the use that has been done of the concept of climate change uh, induced migration or climate refugees. And then it's controversial in that it's hard to make a critique <laughs> when the very concept of climate induced migration or climate refugees points to a very salient topic. In particular, climate change is going to impact huge sectors of the world population. It's those who probably emitted the least CO2 that are now the most exposed to the impacts of climate change. So it's a controversial topic. It's contested. It actually points to uh, how the impacts of climate change that we know are going to be very heavy will influence human mobility. In order to kind of disentangle the matter, I think it's useful to think about where these discourses and concepts of climate refugees, climate migration, and environmental refugees came from. And I think it's good to try to trace the history of those concepts. It's kind of at the core of politics doing politics is appropriating and reappropriating concepts. But at the same time, it's also true that concepts, although they are made of air, <laughs> they still have very strong impacts. So understanding where they come from and what features they bring along is very important. If we think about the debates on, the contemporary debates on how climate change will influence mobility, we see that these debates come primarily from the discussions on environmental uh, displacement that started becoming important in the 70s. So within the northern discourses on uh, sustainable development and global environmental change that got political salience during the late 70s and early 80s, you saw the emergence of the concept of environmental refugees. And the concept was uh, brought about primarily by northern voices that were concerned about the uh, high number of people that according to them would be displaced by the impacts of environmental degradation. So for instance, environmental refugees is a topic that was discussed in connection with desertification back in the 80s. A fear of population in the global south that had to do with mainly two things. One, the fear of overpopulation that would undermine stability, the population bomb, or even the big influential book, Limits to Growth. And then on the other hand, environmentalist discourses were concerned about the impacts that growing populations could have on the environment. From that historical moment, you see that the debate shifted slightly and went over to climate change. So rather than the question being how do environmental degradation cause human mobility, the question became how, how many uh, climate refugees will we have in a couple of decades. Even a series of NGOs have participated and the question was how can we protect those people that are going to be displaced by climate change. But the problem in this framing is that, as I was saying at the beginning, concepts are not neutral. Even those that claim that we should do something for protecting refugee, climate refugees, at the end of the day ended up reinforcing the tendencies to the securitization of migration, the, the big fear of migration as, a no, as something that could be understood as a normal process of social change. So what we have seen in the debate about how environmental and climate change will influence human mobility, we have been stepping into I would say dangerous terrains, reproducing Malthusian views on population and thereby on mobility. The question for critical scholars, I think, is how to find ways to deal with these issues, so deal with the impacts of climate change on human mobility in ways that do not reproduce Malthusian apocalyptic views on waves of refugees or migrants invading the north coming from the south. It will deserve more efforts from scholars that do not want to align on along the lines posed by mainstream discourses on climate change development and human mobility.